Hi, I'm Kevin. I'm the CTO at Lightspark, and we are thrilled today to talk to you about what we've been working on and how we're trying to make Lightning easier for our partners to use. But before we get to that, let's go back in time for a moment. The very people who worked on the internet as we know it today thought of a payment protocol that's native to the web, but sadly, it was never implemented. But at LightSpark, we believe that Lightning will be that payment protocol of the web. And one of my coworkers, Taj, was actually the co-author of the original Lightning white paper. And we're trying to work together to make Lightning even more magical. And at LightSpark, we really see payments as a way to, or we see Lightning as a way to move payments as easily as bits and bytes do on the internet today. We see Lightning as Moving, moving payments as easily as TCP packets as do for data. And our mission is to really make this a reality on Lightning. But sadly, Lightning is too complicated. So let's ask everyone's new best friend, ChatGPT, what it thinks about the complexities of using Lightning for mainstream payments. So as you'll see here, ChatGPT lists out quite a few difficult areas within Lightning. And it even notes that these are not all encompassing. And when we started experimenting with Lightning at LifeSpark, we found this to be very true. We ran Lightning on Raspberry Pis, we ran it on servers, and we found it to be immensely complex and labor intensive. And as we spoke with Bitcoin native companies, this refrain held true as well. Many had tried to integrate Lightning and had canceled the projects partway through or some of them had integrations that require full-time teams to actually manage their nodes. So why is that? Why is Lightning so complex? Well, the concept of channels itself is quite foreign, even to Bitcoin native companies. Who do you open channels to in the first place? When and how do you rebalance your channels? How do you get inbound liquidity? Do you need to pay someone to establish inbound liquidity to you? How do you even route transactions successfully and understand why things fail? There's a whole different set of risks of losing funds under RNL1. But at LightSpark, we're making Lightning simple. If you remember nothing else from our talk today, the keys to remember are, first, that LightSpark is creating an enterprise-grade technical stack to provide reliable payments. Second, that we are trying to abstract away all the complexity. There's no notion of channels or nodes or inbound liquidity. It's just a very simple interface to send and receive funds. And third, we've created a very extremely easy to use simple API and SDK to really meet developers where they are and to make integrating take hours instead of weeks. It's easy to spin up a node and join the network. So let's actually explore what that looks like. Here you'll see our simple sign in flow. You just enter a few pieces of information to set up an account, it just takes a moment, and we'll start setting up your dashboard. In just a matter of seconds, you'll be up and running and ready to go. Now you'll see our main dashboard here. You'll note there's no concept of channels or nodes, it's just a very simple, clean interface where you can see your payments today versus the prior day the amount you sent and received, the average transaction time. And then in the top right, you'll notice there's a toggle to switch between test mode and production mode. So you can begin experimenting without needing to use real funds. Then at the bottom right, you'll see our four main actions, deposit funds, withdraw funds, send funds, and request payment. It's just a very simple dashboard to allow you to do the things that you care about without needing to worry about any of the complexities under the hood. Let's try out a payment request and see how easy it really is. So you would have just clicked on the request button, you fill out the amount, and you add an optional note. Then you'll see here are QR codes generated for your payment invoice. Now this invoice can be paid by any Lightning enabled wallet. And that's really one of the magical things about Lightning. It's an open interoperable standard. So any Lightning enabled wallet can send and receive money over the network. The other side doesn't need to be on the LightSpark stack. As you saw, we were able to set up an account, view our dashboard, and receive a payment all in a matter of seconds. There's no overhead of maintaining your node or figuring out channels or rebalancing, worrying about inbound liquidity. Instead, it all just magically works right out of the box. 
But we don't actually expect most of our partners to spend most of their time on the web portal. We anticipate that they'll integrate to our APIs and SDKs. And that's where LightSpark Connect comes into play. We strive to make it super easy to get started. As you can see, there's a wide array of, array of SDKs and we're constantly adding new languages. We want to meet the customer wherever they are, whether they're using Java, Rust, or any other language, whether they want to be custodial or non-custodial solutions, we want to make it super easy for them to build what they need. And our solutions should really feel very familiar to any customer who has ever integrated with a payments provider. You shouldn't need to know anything about the Lightning Network or about channels or nodes. You'll see here a sample of our JavaScript SDK. You'll notice that in just a few lines of code, we're able to create a new client, generate an invoice, and pay the invoice. It's really only about 10 lines of code. And we want our partners to be able to build on top of the Lightning Network quickly and easily. In fact, our last partner was actually able to integrate in about 48 hours from start to finish. So please take our SDKs for a spin and try to beat that record. Now let's explore the types of things we think that our customers might be able to build on top of Lightning. When you have this payments network with instant settlement and low cost, you can do new things. So to demonstrate, we put together a Chrome extension that lives on top of the LightSpark stack. It shows how Lightning opens up a new paradigm of streaming money on the internet. When money moves as cheaply and instantly, new possibilities are created. In your typical fiat world today, this just isn't possible. It would take days to settle on the receiver side. It would be very costly in general. But with Lightning, you can send money that settles immediately and at a low cost. Imagine receiving your paycheck in real time or watching a creator's content and sending them a fraction of a cent for every couple seconds that you watch the video. But this is really just the tip of the iceberg. Our customers will be able to easily integrate and build new use cases that we can't even envision today. I'll now hand it over to Christian. Talk through some of the details of what we do under the hood to make Lightning more useful and effective for our customers. Thank you, Kevin. I'm Christian Catalini, I'm one of the co-founders with Kevin and also run strategy for LightSpark. Um, what's great about Lightning is that if you trust the safety and security assumptions of Bitcoin, then it's easy to trust Lightning. After all, uh, Lightning is Bitcoin, but that comes with a cost. It forces you to solve a much harder set of technical, economic, and market design challenges. There's no way around it. Lightning is hard. The first problem is that you're locking capital into pairwise channels. And capital locked and idle is extremely expensive. I'm gonna use a ride-sharing analogy today to drive home some of the key concepts around Lightning. Remember when Uber or Lyft were launching in a new city? Well, often they would subsidize and pay drivers just to wait and be ready for when a customer would open the app. You would get a magical experience, but that was extremely expensive for those startups. Bitcoin liquidity on Lightning is, is, is doing exactly the same today. It's waiting there in a channel, killing time, hoping for someone to catch a ride. And that's not only expensive, but it's also fundamentally unsustainable. As those companies realize early on, you can't keep subsidizing those drivers forever. Every Bitcoin on the Lightning Network will have to keep moving, will have to achieve higher velocity. In fact, from an economic perspective, the velocity of Bitcoin on the Lightning Network is what will make or break Lightning itself. It's what will define over the long run if Lightning can displace all of the legacy payment rails. Now, the good news is that together, we can drive the velocity of Lightning up and keep those Bitcoin moving, keep them efficiently applied to executing payments. But putting Bitcoin to good use is just the first step. You also have to find the right routes. When you're trying to submit a payment, you want to ex enable successful uh, execution of every possible um, uh, payment that, that someone may be trying to execute on Lightning. The challenge starts with the lack of roads. Often those connections on the Lightning graph are missing. But the roads and the connections are just the first step. It's a bit like those drivers trying to take random turns, seeing if an exit is blocked or not, seeing if there's construction today. The reality of Lightning today is that often drivers don't find a path. They keep failing. They don't have good traffic information. And when that happens, eventually many participants in the Bitcoin ecosystem have decided just to walk. They're back to layer one. 
which is always going to be slow, but reliable and effective. So how do you solve for this? How do you ensure that Bitcoin can keep moving with high velocity and that you can get actually where you need to go? Well, it starts with building the right roads, establishing the right connections. The second important element for any participant is having a reliable map. And that map needs to come with not only traffic information, but constant updating and maintenance of those roads. If you were to summarize it in one single problem, you need to always ensure that liquidity, Bitcoin liquidity, is where it's needed when it is needed. Now, what's interesting is that once you rephrase this as a prediction problem, we know what the right tool for the job is, AI. And that's why we built Lights for Predict. Lights for Predict solves the key challenges of Lightning in three steps. The first one is that when you come onto the network as a new participant, it understands your needs, it understands what you're trying to achieve on the network, and it will start establishing the right connections for you. Every participant will need a customized setup. Everyone is trying to do something slightly different, whether it's sending or receiving or a combination of both. But what roads should you establish in the first place? Drucker once said that if you cannot measure something, it's very, very hard to improve it. And on Lightning, we found the same challenge. A lot of the important dimensions were not really properly captured and measured. So we started building our own set of internal metrics. One that we spend a lot of time with is called conductivity. We named it after you know, electricity and physics, where conductivity is the obstacle that a material can pose to the passage of an electric current. A node with high conductivity on the Lightning Network is one that can move value effectively from A to B in split seconds. Conductivity is not just a static concept. You may start with some conductivity values, but you need to dynamically adjust them as the needs of our customers evolve. And this is where the second part of PREDICT becomes extremely important. The part that gives you a real-time map of traffic conditions, a map for navigating Lightning transactions. Now suddenly those drivers know if they're about to embark on a highway, a dirt road, if there's construction on the road they usually take, what is the best route and what are the conditions today? If a channel becomes unbalanced, in the past that used to be an insurmountable problem, your payments would just fail. Now we know that that channel can be used to write transactions in the opposite direction. Popular routes in some moments on the network can become congested. And so it's important to reroute traffic maybe to a smaller neighborhood drive, very much like, you know, we've gotten used with, with software like Google, Google Maps and, and Wait. What's also interesting, and this is the third part of PREDICT, is that you need to keep dynamically adjusting liquidity. You need to rebalance those channels. There's a lot of complexity hidden in maintaining those roads and ensuring that when you're trying to execute a payment, they're ready for your needs. It's a little bit like sending drivers around the concert area before the concert is about to end. You want to make sure that they start driving way before the event closes. And that's the same on Lightning with liquidity. That's why we're so excited about the convergence between artificial intelligence and Lightning. That's how we're going to achieve low latency, high reliability in payments, but most important, high capital efficiency. So to sum up, PREDICT gives you the right roads, the best directions, and it ensures that your Bitcoin liquidity is never idle. But how do we know that any of this is working? To some extent, a lot of these AI models can be a little bit like a black box. Well, first of all, we closely monitor success rates. It's really important for us for Lightning to be as reliable as traditional payment rails. The second dimension, and one that we literally obsess about, is velocity of money on the Lightning network. Scaling Lightning really hinges on driving the velocity up iteration after iteration after iteration. Here, the idea is to keep those drivers busy, right? They need to keep, keep picking a ride after a ride after a ride. As you can see here on our stack, at each version of our model, at each version of our stack, we've been improving velocity. Now we're over 15 times more capital efficient than some of the alternatives on Lightning. And that allows us to pass the savings onto you and offer services at a very, very competitive rate. These are the types of, of our technical problems we need to solve for Lightning to truly scale. But starting with solving these technical problems is really just the beginning. We also need to ensure that developers, startups, anyone can really build from enterprise to, to new incumbents and, and players, um, new services and products in the Lightning ecosystem, which is why we're so excited to bring to market the LightSpark Wallet SDK. Now everyone can build delightful payments experiences, whether it's custodial ones, non-custodial, 
iOS, Android browser, you can start bringing a wallet into every service. What is an existing digital wallet, a crypto exchange, and two-sided digital platform, open payments at the speed of light are now available to everyone. And the best part is that it's all interoperable. This opens up a number of new opportunities as say creators can interact with their fans, new types of engagements and rewards can be developed by merchants and on gaming platforms. There's just so many possibilities when payments become more open and interoperable across all of these services. You can take your wallet and your financial experience across all of them and retain the connectivity of Lightning. Our journey in this space started with wallets. Of course, users are extremely important. That's the entry point into the new, new network. We brought on board XAPL, the first bank in the world to adopt Lightning. It's really important to drive these regulated institutions into the ecosystem so that we can connect Lightning to the more traditional payment and financial rails. We followed by bringing on the largest crypto exchange and digital asset provider in the Middle East, Rain. This is the team that was able to have a working integration in less than 48 hours. For Lightning to scale and succeed, we really need to expand the set of constituents and participants in this ecosystem. And that requires building better infrastructure. We also have to meet the risk and compliance obligations of these participants, which is why we've been working with the likes of Chainalysis, Notabene, and TRM Labs to enable their customers to use the services that they've come to use on layer one and that they rely on from a risk and compliance perspective, now also on Lightning. So that that transition to faster real-time rails can be really seamless. But Lightning would not be complete without merchants which is why we teamed with Plexa and started a journey in building delightful commerce experiences on Lightning. Now more than 300 wallets and 45,000 merchants across North America and the rest of the world can easily integrate with Lightning and create new payments experiences that really serve merchants in a novel, novel way. So to summarize, Kevin described at length how we've made Lightning easy to use for enterprises and for any sort of new businesses, developers, startup that really wants to connect to the network. That is a LightSpark Connect product. I described Predict, which is the way that we make Lightning reliable and extremely, extremely capital efficient. And last, I talked about the wallet SDK, which is important in lowering your barriers to entry and really ensuring that everybody can build on Lightning. We want that integration to be seamless, fast, so that teams can build delightful payment experiences where they weren't before. Together, we can really take Lightning to the next level, which is why I would love for you to try it yourself. Join, test our stack, give us feedback. We look forward to improving it together with you. Thank you.